Good evening. We'd like to welcome everyone to the Sanctuaries of Pine Line Glen Echo Baptist Church, located at 6502 Oxford Lane, St. Louis, Missouri. Zip code 63121. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We have another exciting lesson for you this evening. Before we proceed, we'd like to go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord Jesus. We thank you, O God, for waking us up this morning, closed in our right mind, use of our limbs, O God. We ask you now, God, thank you for uh, protecting us through seen and unseen dangers, O Lord. God, as we come before you this evening, O Lord, we ask for you to prepare our minds and our hearts to receive those nuggets from up above, O God, the understanding of your word, O Lord. We ask that for you to make the word clear to us, open it up so we may receive it, O Lord. We thank you now, God, as we come, in for, come to you in anticipation that you have changed the atmosphere and make it favorable for learning, O Lord. We ask this in your darling son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, we have been, uh, for, for this month, most of this month, have been discussing uh, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, amen. For we know that we recognize Christmas as his birth. Uh, this is a time that we, we, we give praise to Almighty God for, we remember uh, uh, John 3, 16, for it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. Amen. We thank God for that. Uh, we say that, that, that Christ is the reason for the season. Amen. We praise and worship his holy name for if it wasn't for that gift and that gift died on the cross for our sins. The Bible said the one who had no sins died for the sins of the world. Uh, that we may be free of sin, have salvation. Where would we be? So amen. So we thank God for all that he has done in his son Jesus Christ. Uh, subject this this evening is Jesus is born, coming from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Again, that's the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses <clears throat> 1 through 12. And again, Jesus is born. Now, the Bible says in verse 1, Now in those days a decree went out from the emperor who was Caesar Augustus. That all the inhabited world, meaning all the Roman Empire, should be, should be registered, or other words, in a, have a census, that they be counted. Now, Roman censors or uh, registration was usually used for military recruitment and also for tax collection. Now, the Jews didn't have to serve in the Roman army, maybe because they weren't trusted by the Romans to serve next to them. So they weren't required to serve in the Roman army, but they were required to pay taxes. What I'm saying is that as much as you like to pay taxes, they, they, they couldn't avoid paying them. Amen. So they hated paying taxes. Now, one reason was that the taxes that they paid went directly into the treasury of Caesar. Amen. And Caesar uses, used his funds to, to, to support the pagan temple. Like, you remember, they, they didn't worship our God, the God, but they worshiped many gods. Their gods included orgies and, and et cetera, et cetera. So they, those funds that even that the Israelites gave went to support pagan Temples. They also went to support the lifestyle of the immoral aristocrats of, of that day of the Romans. So it's, it's kind of like today. If you're against abortion, that you believe in, in other words, you believe in the right of a child, and you, we have to pay taxes to our city and to our government, and you find out that your taxes are going, going to, to abortion clinics to support them. Amen. You, you might be getting a little upset about the situation or circumstances. 
So you can imagine the Israelites in that same situation, forced to give taxes, just like we are today. And, and a lot of times we have no, no means of support to, to tell folks where we want those taxes to go. We, we vote for leaders, amen, that we hope that will carry out our wishes or the will of the people. And sometimes they do, and a lot of times they don't. But this is the world we live in. And this is the world that they lived in in that day. Now, Augustus decree, his command, his order, unbeknownst to him, played right in the plans of God. It went according, according to God's perfect timing and God's perfect plan to bring his son into the world. Now, I understand if you don't know that God controls all of history. And by the decree of the emperor Augustus, Jesus was born in the very town that the prophets said that he would be born in. Now, mind you, even though Jesus' family, Mary and Joseph, lived in the city of Nazareth, they lived in another, t another city. But because of uh, uh, Emperor Augustus' decree that there would be a census, a registration, they were forced to leave where they Nazareth to go to the town where they, where they would register at. And that was in, in Bethlehem where Jesus was born. All to fulfill prophecy. Verse 2. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Amen. The first census, but it came, the timing was perfect according to God. Verse 3. And everyone went to register for the census, each to his own city. So what it's saying that all went to be taxed throughout Judea, Galilee, and Syria. We're talking about men, women, and children. Everyone into their own, this is their own city where they were born, where they had any type of estate, where they belonged, where their family, their, their ancestry, ancestry came from. So now they, even though Joseph was living now and Mary was living now in Nazareth, they had to leave Nazareth to go up toward Judea, amen, toward Bethlehem so they could register, even though they didn't live there at the time. Verse 4. So Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. Verse 5. In order to register with Mary, who was betrothed to him, meaning engaged to him, and she was with child at that time. Remember now we said that when they went to, to, to register, that men, women, and children went, amen, for the taxes. So that's why Mary had to go. Now, so we're saying that the government, meaning the Roman government, meaning Caesar Augustus, forced Joseph to make a long trip just to pay his taxes. Now, again, we're, a lot of us, we're not fond of taxes. Can you imagine having to travel a long way just to give up your money. Amen. Some of us would be in favor of that, wouldn't we? Six. While they were there in Bethlehem to register for the census, the time came for Mary to give birth to her son, Jesus. And verse 7 says, she gave birth to her son, her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no private room for them at the end. Amen. There was no private room for them at the end. 
So we're saying his fine, his fiance, Mary, who had to go with him, gave birth to her baby. But when they arrived in Bethlehem, they had no place to stay. I come to tell you this evening that when we do the will of God, we're not guaranteed the most comfortable life. Amen. You might not have a parade in your name. Everybody might not be patting you on the back when you're doing what God has instructed you to do. A lot of times some of your friends and family will turn their back on you because you're doing the will of God. But I come to tell you, I have to encourage you that, but we're promised that everything, even in our discomforts, has meaning in God's plan. And will work to his good. The Bible said all things work to the good of God. So no matter whether you having a pleasant road, a, a pleasant walk, or a hard road, or a hard walk, if you're doing the will of God, I come to tell you, whose report will you believe? As John said, boy, me and my house, we will believe in the Lord. Understand that whatever you're going through, as long as you're doing it for the Lord, you find faith. That's who I would want to please. Now, the bands of cloth were used to keep a baby warm and, and provide the baby with security. These cloths were believed to protect the baby's inner organs. Uh huh. This custom of wrapping infants is you is still used in many mid east mid eastern towns today. Yeah, they're still doing. It's still a tradition of wrapping the infants. And the mention of the mat the, the manger in this verse is the basis for the tra traditional belief that that Jesus was born in a stable. Stables were often caves with feeding troughs carved into the rock of the wall of the caves, which we call mangers. And these places, these surroundings were known to be dark and dirty. Now, understandably, the Jews didn't expect the birthplace of their Messiah, their King, their Savior, to be in a place like this. They thought that their Messiah, their, their King, their Savior, would be born in, in, in royal surroundings with silk and satin. Yeah. But I come to tell you this evening that we, you, I, we shouldn't limit God by our own expectations of what we expect God to be like. Understand this, that circumstances don't limit God. Circumstances don't limit his power. And circumstances don't limit his power in his world. God is at work wherever he is needed. Wherever the saints are praying, wherever the believers are, He's there working for them in their behalf in this sinful world. And understand this in these circumstances, this tiny, tiny, helpless baby, Jesus lived an, an amazing life. For the Bible said that he, that he healed the sick, made the blind see, made the mute talk and the deaf hear, made the lame walk. This Jesus. He died. He died for us on the cross at Calvary. Again, as the Bible says, he that had no sins died for the sins of the world. Ascended up to heaven. Amen. Don't let me forget that now. I said, not only did he die for the sins of the world, but he rose again from death. Amen. That's the most important. He resurrected. Amen. Rose from the grave and ascended to the kingdom to his father. And sits at his right hand and now. And the good part is the Bible said that he shall return. Anybody glad that he, he's going to return to the earth? And he, 
Won't turn to the earth, return to the earth. Anyway, the Bible says he's going to turn, return and King of kings, Lord of lords. And Christ, Jesus Christ, this baby boy, growing up, will rule the world. And not only rule the world, he will judge all people according to their decision. Yes, I said according to their decision. There's a decision to make. And you can make that decision right now. Again, whose report will you believe? For as me and my house, we shall believe in the Lord. Yeah, what I'm saying here is that you do have a choice this evening to who you're going to believe. Do you believe in him? you believe in him, Jesus, or not? Your belief will determine where you will spend, where you will spend eternity. Either in heaven or hell. The choice is yours. Verse 8. Now in the same region there were shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. God had continued to reveal his son, but not to those we would expect. Luke recalls that Jesus' birth was announced to shepherds, sheep herders in the fields. These may have been the sheep herders, shepherds, who supplied the lambs for the temple sacrifices that were performed for the forgiveness of sin. Verse 9. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them in verse 10, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. So we hear, we, we find out that the shepherds were terrified, but their fear turned to joy as the angels announced the Messiah's birth. Now for ages, a long time, the Jews had waited for this miracle to happen. And when the news came that the miracle had finally came true, it wasn't announced to royalty. It was announced, it was announced to the kings, queens, and princes. It was not announced to the religious leaders of that day. But it was announced to humble shepherds tending their flocks in the fields. And the good news that Jesus is that he comes to all of us, including those that the world judge plain and ordinary. He comes to anyone with a humble heart that's willing to accept him, whoever you are, whatever you do. You can have Jesus in your life today. Don't think or believe that you got to have extraordinary qualifications, that you got to be somebody. Jesus accepts everybody, wherever you are. Verse 11. For this day, the angels, the angels talking, in the city of David, which is Bethlehem, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord, talking about the Messiah. Now I come to tell you this evening, what, what an announcement. As we are in this Christmas season, what an announcement. The greatest event in history has just happened. The Messiah has been born. But, there's always a but in life, isn't it? But some of the Jews were waiting for a different type of Savior. Yeah. Some were waiting for a savior to, to, to deliver them from Roman rule. Yeah, they wanted, they wanted a conquering king, amen, to come and deliver them, break their chains of slavery under Roman persecution. Others wanted a savior to cure them from physical illness. Somebody wanted to adopt in the house. But Jesus 
while healing their illnesses, healing their diseases. His primary thing, he came to establish a spiritual kingdom and deliver us from sin. Understand that Christ can heal us not only from physical sickness, but he can also heal us from spiritual, I say spiritual sickness. There is no sin. There is no problem too, too great or too small for Christ. He can handle it all. In verse 12. And this will be a sign for you. Meaning by which you will recognize him. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a mansion. Here in this verse, the, the angels in, are inviting the shepherds to greet the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, the sacrificial Lamb. Who would take, who is able to take away the sins of the world. Not just right now, not just later, but forever. Jesus is your Messiah. Jesus is the Savior. Expect no other. And I come to ask you, do you look forward to meeting him daily in prayer and in his word? Have you discovered a Lord, a God so wonderful that you can't help sharing him with joy to your friends and your family? Remember John 3, 16, while, we grew, while we're closing. For God so loved, remember the word love, God so loved the world that he gave. Understand that, that love, true love, real love gives. That he gave his only begotten son. The only one he had. That whosoever. That means God has no respect of persons. That whoever. Whosoever believes in him. In God's son. Should not perish. Mean face eternity. Eternal death. But have everlasting life. I understand that there's life. In Jesus' son, in God's son, there's life. Remember, Jesus said that I came not only that they may have life, but they may have life more abundantly. Amen. So let's step it up a little bit. There's, there's abundant life in belief in accepting Jesus Christ. Again, the title for today has been Jesus is born. May you go out, spread the word, amen, and have a happy holiday season. And remember, Christ is the reason for the season. Amen. We thank you for joining us this evening and encourage you to join us on Sunday mornings at, at 11.15 a.m. Amen. You can join us uh, on our church conference call number 760-548-9305. Or you can join us on Facebook Live at 12 p.m. Please support our ministry by sending donations to Pine Line Glen Echo Baptist Church, located at 6502 Oxford Lane, St. Louis, Missouri, zip code 63121, or donate through the Givelify mobile app, backslash Pine Line Glen Echo. Amen. We encourage you, amen, if you're listening to us right now, that you uh, contact, be with us at 7 30 p.m. For, for the Pine Line prayer call. Amen. We all believe here at Pine Line that there's power in prayer. And amen. If you know someone that needs, you don't need prayer yourself, but you know someone that needs prayer. Amen. We ask you to join us on that line. Amen. Again, it's 760-548-9305. Amen. We'd love to have you. Amen. We'd love to pray for you. Amen. Knowing that God is able, God can do all, all things but fail. Come on now, somebody. Amen. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. Good night.